Do you like venomous snakes? Well, in this video, we're going to be comparing two pit vipers iconic to North America. So stay tuned. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Ho Sway from Ho Sway's Exotics. And on this channel, we make videos about reptiles and amphibians. And as you can tell by the title of today's video, we're gonna be comparing two of the most iconic pit vipers here in North America, the Cottonmouth and the Copperhead. So these two pit vipers are often confused for one another and alongside with some non-venomous snakes like the corn snake, banded water snake, maybe hognose snakes and a couple other species like that. But in today's video, we're gonna be going over some of the key differences in between the two species, so that way we can help alleviate any misconceptions people may have about the two. So the scientific name for the water moccasin is a Kistrodon pisivorus. The water moccasin is a semi-aquatic pit viper with a few subspecies like the Florida cottonmouth, the Western cottonmouth, and the Eastern, and they can grow up to three to four feet long. And water moccasins have large triangular shaped heads due to having their venom glands on the top of their head. And they also have some pretty awesome banding in varying colors of light brown and dark brown. And water moccasins can be found in more of your freshwater habitats like your swamps, your creeks, and your marshes. And they feed on fish, amphibians, and small mammals. But I will say they are pretty opportunistic animals and they will eat pretty much whatever they can get their heads on. And next up, we got the Copperhead, which is the Kistrodon contortrix. The Copperhead is a species of pit viper, also with a few subspecies like your broadbanded, transpicos, northern and southern copperheads, and they can range from around two to four feet, so they're a little bit smaller and thinner body snakes compared to the water moccasin. The Copperhead also has a more triangular shaped head, but it's less triangular than I would say the water moccasin because the water moccasins definitely have way bigger triangular shaped heads than the copperheads also due to the size difference as well but that's another signifying factor between the two copperheads also have a pretty cool banding pattern as well uh, they normally have hourglass or Hershey kiss shaped patterns going down the sides and backs and this can range from light browns and dark browns but this is highly variable within the species, as you can tell with my two snakes here. Copperheads also, as babies, have their bright green tail they use as a lure, but they do lose that as they grow up, but they do not get darker and they retain their banding patterns compared to the copperhead. Copperheads also exhibit a bright green tail as babies that they also lose while moving into adulthood, like the water moccasin, but they don't lose their actual banding patterns and get darker like their other cousin, the water moccasin. So they retain a lot of their beautiful colors. Moving on to the copperhead's habitat is highly variable because they can persist in multiple different habitats from your urban settings to more rocky hillsides to swamps, creeks, and pretty much any areas. So moving on to venom and venom potency between the two snakes, the copperhead has a less potent venom compared to the water moccasin, and this is due to numerous different factors from the size of the snake, the amount of yield that they have, the consistency of the venom, and many other things like that. But as far as we're concerned, the copperhead has a less potent venom, and we'll get more into that as we get into some other videos, going back into the venomous snakes of Georgia videos. So now that we have a little bit of information about the two different snakes, let's go ahead and talk about what makes them different. So if you've noticed by now that they have similar scientific names, they're both a part of the Echistrodon family, or the Echistrodon complex. Now this family does include other species of snake as well, but as far as North America, these are the two species of Echistrodon that we have here. So on the left side of the screen, I have a phylogenetic tree of all the pit vipers here in North America. A phylogenetic tree is just a diagram that we use in biology to help show relations in between different families of species and it's sort of like a family tree in a sense. And as you can see here, these snakes are very closely related together, but they are distinct species and have separated out from each other. So moving on to some of the key physical differences in between these two snakes, other than their phylogeny. As mentioned before, the copperhead is a smaller, more slender body snake 
compared to the water moccasin. But as babies, these two snakes can be very hard to tell apart, considering their banding can be very similar and they have the same colored tails. One thing that I've noticed about the copperhead versus the water moccasin is the copperheads tend to have more of yellow colored eyes versus the water moccasin has a more darker colored eye. The water moccasin also features a long brown stripe right underneath the eye, whereas the copperhead does not. And the water moccasin is definitely a more darker colored snake in my opinion, versus the copperhead is what I use to remind myself of a more desert camo pattern. They do prefer different habitats considering that the water moccasin likes to be close to a water source and they do feed on fish and other little small mammals and frogs and things. But they are highly adaptable just like the copperhead and they normally have been seen up under the same logs, stumps, or wherever you happen to see them outside. But your copperheads are more in tune with your more urban areas are more highly adaptable in my opinion because I've seen them like around my city in like city limits versus I've also seen them out in the countryside and the swamps and all kinds of different areas. As far as keeping both snakes in captivity, the copperhead definitely takes the win. These guys are more highly adaptable to different kinds of habitats and environments, so they do make for a better captive snake uh, per se. I would definitely try to find one that's either captive bred than preferred than the other one being wild caught. I would also say that water moccasins, if you don't get them really as babies, they're a little bit more harder to keep in captivity and they don't do too well. Uh, especially as adults if you get them if they're wild caught so I would definitely try to get a captive bred water moccasin if possible if not get you a wild caught baby that would be the better option with that they tend to do a whole lot better in captivity as you can see with mine I got him from when he was a little small danger noodle compared to now so Make sure guys, if you got any facts or any extra information that you want me to add into the next video, tell me down in the comments so I can add that in. And we'll make another video similar to this one and we'll keep going further and further in depth with the differences in between these two species. As I get more, we'll start to do a little bit more comparisons with rattlesnakes versus the actual water moccasins and different kind of snakes. And we'll just see what we get and how far the rabbit hole goes with this. So appreciate you guys coming by watching the video. I'll see you on the next one.